Okay, ladies, some information about the log cabin fingerless mitts, really cool pattern. Um, we talked about making some changes to it in class. The pattern has you, let's talk about the pattern just for a second here. Um, it has us cast on here, knit in this direction for 14 rows or seven ridges. We then end with a wrong side row. She says, ready to work a right side row and bind off. This is where we would be and cut the yarn. We then turn the piece on its side, pick up along here, seven stitches. We're gonna turn and work the row back and we are gonna work the last of those seven picked up stitches with that remaining bind off stitch to get back to a, the normal seven and then we will knit forward from there. Again, ending with a wrong side row for seven ridges, 14 rows. Then we bind off with the right side facing. If there's some concern about right side, stick a pin, tie a little bow, uh, right at the right at the get go. It helps to keep that, keep us on track with which is the right side. Remember, two rows make a ridge. So if you do not have a ridge up against the needle on the right side, you have not done the second of the two rows. Okay, so we're gonna bind off again. We have that stitch. We're gonna pick up seven stitches along here and then we're gonna come here and pick up seven stitches in the cast on for the 14 stitches for piece number three. Knowing that when I pick this up, every time I bind off and have to pick up in it later, it shoves that hard bind off to the inside against our hand. So I'm thinking, why do we have to bind off? We could leave them active stitches and then pick up, you know, just knit up into the active stitches. How would we have to change the pattern to make that happen? We would end with the last wrong side row not turn around and bind off because we're not going to do that, which means we also don't need to work that decrease at the end of that that second row, the pickup row, that next row back. We won't have to put those two together because that one won't exist. So I decided to give it a go and see if it was possible. The other thing, I actually know it is because I've done this before, um, but it worked out very nicely in this as well. The other thing that I did was on Friday when we were together, we talked about the size of the mitt and how to alter, oops, wait, alter the end product. Not necessarily is it going to be easy for us to change the number of stitches used, but we could definitely change the gauge, look what happened. So this is a, that tail's everywhere. This is a sport weight, Cascade Superwash sport weight, I think. So definitely smaller. And that will make the mitt eventually that much smaller, more like child size, small child size. Okay, so the other thing about the cast on, I could choose to just normally cast on and then knit the rows, I could. But if I do that, when I come back to these stitches, I'm gonna have that cast on on the wrong side. Uh, see, I haven't done, I didn't go that far in this one yet. So this cast on, or that's a edge. That's a bind off edge. Right there. See the ridge that's there? That's gonna write up against your hand. So what if I waist cast it on, like I've done here, work my 14 rows. Now, as an aside, mm -hmm, I'm trying to think if I have an example to show you. Doesn't really, oh, it does it right there. No, not very well. So if I'm not cautious of how many rows that I work on this, and in this instance, know how we have that rule about waist cast on, you have to get the working yarn on the needle before you're actually cast on. 
In this instance, you just want to work 14 rows. That pushes the bump right up against the edge of the stitch. Do you see how it's right, the little bump right there? There's only that stitch, so when I knit up in that one, there's not going to be a gap, uh, you know, gap. We make it sound like it's such an enormous deal. And it would just simply be a row of stockinette, which let's be honest, only you and I will know about, but we'll know it. I'll know it. And as a result, I think about it. So if instead of knitting all of the waist cast on stitches, you just knit them, that's row one, turn, knit back, row two, it will address the needle better so there's no um, little drama about it. I think we're all pretty good with waist cast on. I've done that before. Um, I also put these on waist yarn. This is not necessary. I use, um, this is a short one, 16 inch, not my happy place. I used a 24 inch needle and as a result was able to play this game. I would leave it as a holder and then I could come along with a 24 inch, almost like magic loop and I could fish up and I could work back and forth and then I could leave those on and they get kind of distorted and, you know, wonky but they're still there. Every once in a while, I'd take a spare needle and run some of them off as it got bigger, but for the most part, I was able to keep it all on the circular needle. I did not go looking for a longer one, so I picked up, since it's a sample, to do this, I picked up double points to work it on. So there's my beginning one. I have finished my wrong side row. This is the right side. I'm gonna come up with my next color and knit up on the side of my stitches. Let's do that a little bit. As I was, I posted some pictures on Friday to show you what to look for. When I look at this one, I can see that that's the loop for the last stitch. So I'm gonna look for all of those. The other way I could think about this, I can track them all going straight down. Or look here, there's a frown. And there's the little smile right next to it. So let's knit up those stitches. The other thing that I do when I knit up for these kinds of things, most of the time we talk about piercing the knot that is the ridge going straight through to the back. I'm going to do a couple of them that way so you can see it, but let me show you what I do first. Instead of piercing through to the back, I'm going to slide under the loop and knit them up. Now I'm looking for the frown and I'm going to go to the smile right next door and knit it up. There's the frown. See it right there? There's the frown. So I go right next door and knit it up. We're going to do one more of those and then I'll show you. If I poke it, so you can see there's almost like a little belly button. Do you see it? There's one there and one there. If I poke it and pick it up, poke it and pick it up. Oh, I'm still going. Do you see that it shoves a ridge to the back? There's a little bit more where this is very flat, the very flat, right up against. So nothing to rub against in the wearing. That's the reason I don't poke through. Sometimes I will, depending on what we're doing. But in this instance, I like sliding under the loop on the top and knitting it up. I have to tell you that knitting around the camera is odd. It feels funny. So here's my last one. That should be seven. And now I'm gonna knit that would be row one. I'll turn and knit back. I'm gonna knit for just a second. I wanna show you what I mean by when I knit back, the bumps will be addressing right up against the needle, which tells me I've done that backside row. I just keep pulling on my tails, tidy stuff up. Okay, so 
See these little guys right here? How they are literally right up underneath, right hugging the needle. Let's knit a couple of them and you're gonna see what happens when we knit the row. The little V is under the needle. I knit four of them so maybe we can see better. Okay, do you see that the, <laughs> the knitted row is underneath? Here, the little bump is right up against the needle, and here, the knitted row. So that would suggest that I'd already knitted it. It's not, if I want them to go together as invisibly as possible, when I go to knit the next row, I want those bumps up against the needle, or I'll have two little rows of stockinette. If I came over here and I knit it again, I'd have two little rows of stockinette. That would look funny. It's like a little gap in the garter stitch. Like, hmm, what happened? Okay, so I could finish those. If I finish those, I will be where I am now with this one. Ready to pick up and pick up out of my waist yarn. So I have another color. Let's slide under them again. I'm going to start with the bump right under the needle. And then I'm going to find that one. Oh, don't let go of the end, Athena. Primony. That's going to make for the yarns arguing. Okay, now, here I am. I'm going to look for the frown and go to the little smile just to the side. Just to the side, just to the side, just sliding along the top. I've got to make sure I get that last one in there. Should have seven for each color. And now here we are, ready to pull out the waist cast on. If I pull up on this, I have to pull up on it like I mean it. I can see, I'm gonna make sure. I can see that there's one right there and one beside it. When I take out waist cast on, remember that the loops, when they we follow our knitting, they go up and down and up and down. We're using, when we did the waist cast on and we knitted out of it, we used the up loops. We're now gonna turn around and use the downward facing loops and that one's gone. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six. I need that one. We almost always will run out right at the end. And then the next one is right there. That's gonna be the next one. Now normally, we pull out from the other end, but in this instance, it doesn't want us to do that. So I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna grab my, the other end of my very short needle <laughs> because I didn't take the time. And now look, see how when I start to pull this one out, that edge goes away? That would have been the other up loop I knitted out of. So now I need to make sure that I capture Hold on. Each of these. As I pull them out. And because I captured that one right up near the edge, there should be seven. So I have five. Now as I get down here, I have that one on the other needle because I captured it. That was number six. And here should come November 7, I've already knitted. I'm gonna take that out of there and pull this out. So I have that one, which I picked up already, and six more for a total of 14. And when I turn it over, let's knit back. I know the pink dry part of the program. Um, When I knit back, you'll see 
on the back. There is no ridge. There's no nothing to rub up against me or feel. I think I just dropped my needle. I had a sewing up needle on the table. I think I just pushed it off the table and onto the floor. Ooh. And once I did, this would be row two. And I'm just going to keep playing with the little tails, pushing them down, tidying them up a little bit. They just want to be tidied up until I finish them in. So now, here we are with it right up against. There's the front of it. Look on the back. Nice and smooth. No ridges to rub or feel funny. So that's... I think I'm going to stop this here, ladies. I will come back and um, show you weaving in ends and garter stitch in the next video to kind of keep it to a minimum. Okay, enjoy.